Hello folks, it's NBZ here, and today I'm bringing you some Kirby Star Allies, the demo, which just dropped on the Nintendo Switch eShop today. Uh, you may be wondering, NBZ, how do you record your Nintendo Switch like this? You said in the past you didn't have the means. Uh, well, recently I acquired an Elgato, uh, courtesy of uh, viewer slash listener slash uh, general nice person Robin on Twitter who uh, sent me one. So now I can record some Nintendo Switch stuff, which is very exciting. It means I can do some videos on Zelda and Mario and all that stuff. And in fact, I tried to record a video where I was showing off my Mario Odyssey photo album but uh, some corruption happened, lost the audio, so unfortunately that has gone the way of the dodo. But hopefully things should be fixed and working now and uh, playing some Kirby. So my history with Kirby generally goes, I like Canvas Curse a lot. Canvas Curse is a great game. It's incredibly innovative and interesting and does a lot of different things with Kirby. Uh, and I've generally stayed clear of the, the normal Kirby game. So I, pl I played Rainbow Curse. I played Mass Attack, which I did not enjoy at all. I found Mass Attack incredibly frustrating in a lot of ways. Um, it was just... I can't even remember most of that game because it's a bit of a blur to me, but it was just not fun and I, I didn't enjoy it. But um, here we are with Kirby Star Allies, which, you know, it's a day of the week, so there's another Kirby game releasing. Uh, there is a frequency to these which is somewhat scary. We had two on 3DS, of course, with Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot, and now we have this new one, which I didn't know a huge amount about. Uh, they've showed it off in a couple of Nintendo Directs and, and things here and, and there, but I haven't really paid attention, if I'm honest, because I'm not particularly interested. Uh, so I went into this kind of with open arms to see what it's about, and the central gimmick, as you can kind of see, is similar to... I guess, I'm not sure if other Kirby games have done this before, but you know, in the past, at least in uh, the Super Nintendo one, which is on the SNES Classic, and I'm, I'm forgetting its name right now, uh, you can kind of have allies on your side. And back then, you could go through the Great Cave Offensive, which allows you to do two players. I assume uh, multiplayer here goes up to four players with the four characters, but if you don't have other people to play with, the AI controls these other characters who just follow behind you, kind of like Pikachu and Pokemon Yellow, uh, and they will attack for you, with you, uh, they will help you in certain situations, which we'll probably get to show off later down the line in this video, but to me it seems like, again, Kirby is always a game built for anyone to play, it's a very easy thing, just, it's very colourful and nice and happy, that's why they're kissing each other and giving each other health. Um, it does say that they're feeding each other food, which I mm, feel like I'm not down with uh, what they're trying to tell me. Like, there's there's clearly uh, a massive love in going in. Kirby is an orgy fest, let's be honest. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, that was a thing, I believe, that was in uh, the uh, Kirby Superstar. That's the name of it. Now it finally comes to my brain on the Super Nintendo, where you could, you know, kiss your friend and give them health back. Um, but in this game, obviously, you have this ability to throw hearts at enemies to get them on your side. And then you can kind of combine them together. So here's a scenario where I have an ice power and I need to press up on the control stick to combine with my rock friend to turn him into a curling stone so I can just smash through this barrier and, and make it to the other side. Um, so that's interesting. That calls to mind the N64 Kirby game, which I've never actually played. I've watched, I believe, a Let's Play of it. God, I've watched so many Let's Plays of so many different games over the years, just because back in the day I, I watched video games more than I played them, quite honestly. Um, and uh, my friend Bally, obviously, has played Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards. So in that game, it was more of a direct, you get one power, then you get another power, and they interact in some way. Whereas here, it's less hands-on. It's more get to a specific scenario, which may be a puzzle-solving situation, in which you are then able to use two abilities together in order to create a situation where you can get past it. Um, so that's kind of how this is built so far, and there's another puzzle coming out later uh, which involves that, but uh, there is something nice about the aesthetics of Kirby. Obviously, it's a very colourful, happy game. I feel always that Kirby's a bit too slow for my liking, especially in the air, and I know that's kind of his boon, but um, it is a bit floaty, <laughs> which is stupid to say, because Kirby, of course, is going to be goddamn floaty. Um, but I just dove into the water there a couple times because I love what Nintendo does when it comes to every time you transition from a water area to an above ground area, they put that little filter on the soundtrack to make it sound like your ears are underwater hearing uh, the music and that it's a little bit uh, off. 
uh, and uh, Celeste does that in fact, Celeste does that when you go underwater and the music changes. Always love little touches like that and the Kirby games generally have a, done a good job of, of getting those across. So here's the scenario where I need to light up these barrels over here. Clearly I can light up this rope which is gonna destroy them but then the rope gets put out because there's water in the way. So uh, here we need to basically use the umbrella uh, in order to bypass that. So have one of our friends put up the umbrella and then use me with the fire in order to put it out. But unfortunately I killed the fire guy. So just go off screen to get him back again um, and then we can, can get it off. And in practice, this is a neat concept. I like the idea of it. It's just whether there's anything meaningful you're getting for doing this stuff and going out of the way. And I don't know how much it will be implemented into the core game like whether it's necessary because it seems like a lot of these places that you're doing this extra stuff to figure things out are off the beaten path or unnecessary they aren't really needed for you to get through the main game um, and you just get these kind of these puzzle pieces it's, it's weird kind of street pass thing going on in this game where at the end of the level you have all these puzzle pieces you've collected and they will randomly slot into a bunch of different puzzles. I don't know if that leads to concept art, that probably is the most likely scenario uh, given a game like Kirby where collectibles are um, not super meaningful. So that makes sense and you know I kind of miss Street Pass so it's nice to see it in some form somewhere or another. Uh, but In any case, uh, the friend system seems like another gimmick, uh, nothing particularly innovative. Uh, Kirby's never innovated in these main games too much. Um, a lot of it is just based around mixing powers and finding fun powers and doing different super attacks. Speaking of which, here is a super attack that is a friend circle because that's an appropriate name for a thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just look at this wrecking ball. This is where I started to, to enjoy the movement in this game because this is fast and uh, you can actually hit things and destroy them and uh, and make some momentum carry you forward uh, where otherwise I have to rely to some of Kirby's copy abilities in order to feel that center speed I want out of a game like this like platformers probably doesn't help I've been playing a ton of Celeste and the jump button is on a different button so I'm a bit out of sorts when going through this game and not really knowing what I need to do uh, and messing up constantly but it's what you get for playing a bunch of different platformers back to back is it's gonna mess with you um, I do like the sounds for collecting things in Kirby games though. It's a very wholesome jingle to them. Nintendo always makes collectibles feel good in any game they make. It's just like, yeah, we have nice, we have good sound effect and sound design people. They're the best in the biz and we're just gonna continue doing great work. Um, uh, the one thing that I should bring up with this demo is, and I believe this was confirmed in the past, but this does tell me, unfortunately, this game runs at 30 frames per second, as opposed to 60. Which is a little bit strange considering it's a 2D platformer and Nintendo have generally stuck to trying to make all their games 60 frames a second. Uh, I don't know if Triple Deluxe or Robobot are 60, but I imagine they should be. Uh, so it is a little bit weird. Uh, it, this game looks really nice. Like I, I feel like I stop here for a second to just admire the background. Like it's a really gorgeous 2D Kirby that we have in HD, I believe the first HD Kirby game, right? Because the Wii U never really had one. Uh, the last mainline Kirby was on Wii um, when it comes to main consoles. So yeah, first time you're seeing Kirby in HD and it looks pretty damn good. But uh, that lack of frame rate is really disappointing to me. Um, just doesn't feel as fluid and as nice as I would like it to. And you know, that's one of my main priorities when it comes to video games is having a nice high frame rate so that things are uh, in motion and look good. I've actually just played a bit of the Final Fantasy 15 demo on PC and seeing that game run at 60 is just wonderful. It's really excellent. So disappointing there. I really don't know why that decision was made. Um, seems like the Switch can handle games that look this good at a high frame rate. I mean look at something like Splatoon 2. Uh, I appreciate that you know there are obviously differences in terms of engine and development and all that stuff and I believe Hals is still involved with the Kirby series uh, to that extent uh, when it comes to developing these games. So I don't know if it's all uh, done internally, but uh, hey, that's uh, an unfortunate thing. Seems like also here that my teammates are doing those combo attacks together because I don't believe I orchestrated that curling stone to happen. It just kind of came out of nowhere. But Kirby bosses, as with you know standard Kirby games, are 
pretty much just beat em up fests. Uh, there's a weirdness to Kirby games as well because it feels like Smash Brothers to a very slight degree, but not as good as Smash Brothers. So I always feel like there's something a little bit missing when it comes to the combat in these games. It's I understand like the base mechanics and I get like all these moves that they've invented and everything. It does feel very Smash Brothers in that way that you have a kind of you can, you, you, this game has a dodge, like mid-air dodge, that looks like a smash dodge. Uh, and you can do attacks mid-air and they'll be different to on the ground and directional based attacks and all that stuff. And yet it never quite feels as competent or good uh, as the Smash series. Which it's never going to because Sakurai and his team are generally very, very good at kind of game feel stuff. Um, but it's, it's competent, it's fine, and look, who... You can't in good conscience tell me that buff DDD does not excite you in some way because my god look at this thing it's just it's absurd uh definitely a far more interesting boss than the easy stage in this demo which is hey guess what it's that tree who keeps coming back to life and never dies um who you just bash in constantly and it drops apples sometimes but buff diddy -di -di, much more interesting boss fight for sure um so yeah that's pretty much it those are my thoughts on the kirby star allies demo it seems okay like it seems fun it seems like a good background game to play while listening to a podcast uh speaking of the music like that's something that i wouldn't necessarily need because that last little jingle there kind of tells you all you need to know about uh how much that has really changed uh although it, to be fair kirby games will probably come with a bunch of new soundtracks and stuff like that i think they just they like to hew a lot to the old themes and and don't th there's a lot of tradition i feel in the kirby series um so uh, yeah, and you can see here, here are the puzzle piece things. So it seems like there are like multiple of these that you will unlock uh, as you go through the game and maybe concept art is what that ends up being. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they do a little trailer afterwards which shows you some of the neat things uh, in terms of powers you've got going on. This paintbrush one looks very cool. Spiderweb, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I may consider getting this at some point. I think I'm probably more likely to go back into the 3DS and grab Triple Deluxe because that's now a Nintendo Selects title and is down to like £14 uh, most places. So it seems like my next port of call when it comes to Kirby. But man, this friend train looks pretty good. Look at that friend train. He's riding on the star. Some of these later levels do look much more interesting to me, and especially some of the more weird enemy and power-ups that you can gather. So positive impressions, I think. Uh, nothing too groundbreaking, but it looks great on the Switch's portable screen. Played uh, the first level on that, and then the other one on the TV. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I believe it's coming out end of this month, so uh, there's a quick look at Kirby Star Allies. I'll get some more videos up soon. I'm currently uh, in the process of doing a video which is scripted, which I've written, uh, and I will be editing that together. I will, however, be away for probably around three weeks uh, after this goes up, so don't expect anything else too soon. But uh, for now, there we are. It's Kirby Star Allies. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.